Well, it's been quite a while since I've done this. Um, some new things, you'll notice the glasses, they're new. T-shirts relatively new as well, in case you're interested. Um, but it has been a little bit of a while since I've uploaded to YouTube. There's no real reason for it, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I've still been playing Football Manager in the meantime. I've been doing a, a network save with a friend of mine. And I think that's kind of maybe took over a little bit of my want and motivation to play Football Manager for YouTube content. But I'm ready to get back into it. I'm still at Sheffield United and we still will be continuing with the Sir Alex Ferguson challenge. It will be a little bit of a, a <laughs> recap for me and yourselves, no doubt, as it has been quite a while since I've been on this save. But in case you were wondering, we are just uh, approaching March in game. We're about to face Porto in the Europa League. So let's get into the game. So having a look back at the last video to see where we actually were, it was the Arsenal defeat that we seen last time, 3-2 away from home. We followed that up with a 2-0 home victory against Chelsea. Luca Pellegrini from left wing back getting both goals in this one in the 18th and 25th minute. I'd love to commentate on the match, but um, I can't even remember doing it. So following that was a 1-1 home draw against Manchester United. Luca Pellegrini once again getting a goal from left wing back. Uh, Equalising that after Victor Lindelof had gave Manchester United the lead. We then went away to Watford and won 5-0 in the FA Cup 5th round. Erling Haaland with a hat-trick, Dodo and Gibbels with the goals for us there. And finally was a 2-2 away draw against Southampton, which um, sees us lie in fourth position in the Premier League. Uh, not doing too badly, nine points ahead of Chelsea in fifth position. So Champions League football is looking more of a certainty as time goes on in the league. Um, which I'm happy with. I can't even remember what my expectations are. What are they? Reach, uh, qualify for Euro Cup 2. Yeah, so we're doing well above what the board expect from us in the champion, uh, in terms of the Premier League performance. Uh, what did they reach first knockout round of the Euro Cup? We've done that. We are playing FC Porto today. Uh, fifth FA Cup, done that. And we've done the League Cup as well. So we are absolutely flying in terms of the board's expectations signing high reputation players as part of the club vision and club culture i would like to get rid of that as soon as possible it's not my uh, modus operandi signing players who are already established in the game i prefer to sign players who are not established and then establishing them at our club so for today's episode we are going to face porto and aston villa uh today euro cup second knockout round for um the porto match oh yeah well, you skip the first round if you top the group don't you now in the europa league they've changed all the rules in a couple of years time and it's already taken effect during football manager so uh, forgive me for my ignorance in the subject but then we will play the home game against um, Aston Villa in the Premier League so in terms of this game we are at home FC Porto I'm assuming either came out of the Champions League or did they come second in their group so they've came out of the Champions League they had to play a Real Sociedad in the uh, Europa League first knockout round which they won um, and which meant they have faced us today. We do have the advantage, of course, being the home side. Still got a lot of strong contenders in the Europa League. This is a good tie. Monaco versus Manchester City. So at least one of them will be exiting this competition at this stage. Borussia Mönchengladbach are usually a decent side in football manager. Dortmund is still in it. Schalke, all, all the German sides are usually quite uh, capable in Europe. And you still got the likes of Valencia from Spain as well. But obviously Manchester City being the obvious candidate for... A, a challenge in terms of the Europa League. I would like to win the competition, quite honestly. Of course you do. You don't enter any competition hoping you're not going to get <laughs> to the final. But um, yeah, Manchester City, probably the major side in terms of who's going to actually stop us and who won't. I want to take another look at the squad, actually. I didn't even know who plays for me. Jack Butland, of course, being our goalkeeper. Bella Kochap, Jean Batella, Dodo, Pellegrini. Uh, still, uh, that's all coming floating back. Top scorer at the minute, Esposito. Still our young Italian. Plenty of room to grow still. Valued at 65 million. He is wanted, actually. Actually, say si, I'm playing um, Sampdoria in the network save with my friend. And I signed him again for uh, 14 million. He's actually not as good as he is on my Sheffield United save. So he's definitely got lower potential ability on that one than he does on this. Uh, which I'm pleased about. At least I've got the best version as I can on my Sheffield United and YouTube save, which is nice. So we're finally here. With our first game back in a very long time with Sheffield United. And we are facing FC Porto at home. And this, I think, is going to be the lineup. Don't want to play Mariba. 
I think I do actually. I want to see him perform as well as he possibly can. Um, Jack Butland is of course going to start in goal. Bella Kotchap, Onjean and Tilo Kerra will be our centre defenders for today's game. Batella can probably feel a little bit aggrieved at not starting. But um, I'm still getting familiar, back familiar with the squad and who's performing well and who is not. Um, Dodua and Luca Pellegrini will of course be our wing-backs. Mariba and Danny Olmo in the centre of midfield with Jean-Pierre in behind Erling Haaland and Sebastiano Esposito. On the bench we've got Predrad Reykjavik, David Batella, Marcos Antonio, Renato Sanchez, Ender Stevens, Oliver Norwood. I forgot about Ender Stevens, what a freaking guy he is. And Willem Goebbels. Let's get into the game. So we come up against Porto, who come at us with the 4-1-2-3 formation. Some fantastic, fantastic players. The main man of which is Fabio Silva, who I've definitely been eyeing up um, in other saves on Football Manager. And I'm going to have to keep an eye on him to see if he ever becomes available at a reasonable price in this save as well. Diaz, David Neres, Condogbia, uh, Vera, who I know is a good central midfielder, um, who's in Danilo Pereira, Elabdo, uh, uh, Enkolulu. Um, Coop minus Suarez and Costa. Aye, that's the team. So I guess I'll discuss a little bit more about what's going to happen in the future with the channel and with this save. Um, in terms of its regularity, I'll probably be bringing it down a little bit. It'll probably be four to five times per week rather than every day. I've just got to be realistic about what I can accomplish uh, going forward with YouTube um, in terms of just my, my interest level, my motivation and me headaches you'll notice the glasses um i was getting quite a few at work i've been doing a lot more work on the computer and um, a lot of my responsibilities have moved to that platform as luca pellegrini puts us in front and then i spend an awful lot of time particularly when i was uh, heavily involved with the youtube in front of two screens you know so i was getting headaches quite a bit and i've always required glasses throughout my life but the, there was no prescription necessary whenever I went to the opticians because one eye is perfect and one eye is poor so I, most of my vision came out of one eye and the other eye was just there along for the ride but now that um, the headaches are definitely increasing uh, they have now recommended glasses which is why you'll see them a lot more often in my videos you not always see them because although they mainly fall when I'm watching TV or sitting in front of a computer sometimes I just didn't want to wear them so I won't as my Reba comes forward here goes for strike goes just wide but yeah in terms of the series going forward it'll probably be four times a week and I am going to look to maybe create some different kind of content football manager content on the channel I know you're probably not incredibly enthusiastic about seeing experiment type stuff but I've already um I've already done the legwork for about three or four videos looking at the effect of um, different kind of extreme attributes. So, you know, you're talking extreme amount of pace. How would that affect this Sheffield United side if suddenly everybody had 20 pace and 20 acceleration and different kinds of things like that. Maybe looking at some of the more hidden attributes in the game, seeing how they actually affect real world performance in game. And I'm going to be doing some more stuff like that, if not only because I am interested in terms of seeing what the results would actually be, but I'm also looking to grow the channel, basically. Uh, let's play content while it's probably what I would enjoy doing most because I just love playing the game. Uh, more experimental and in-depth game mechanic content uh, definitely brings in the audience more and it will increase the viewership for the let's play content just by having more eyes on the screens to begin with so you know one of my goals for um 2020 with youtube is to actually get past the 1000 subscriber mark which would allow me to become a youtube partner um because at the minute that is the limit i'm already got the watch time because there's two um conditions that you've got to meet to be able to be a youtube partner you've got to have i think it's 4000 hours of watch time in the past 12 months and 1000 subscribers i've got the watch time I just don't have the subscribers so I will be putting a little bit more effort into content that's more likely to be able to bring new viewers in than just entertain the viewers that are already here um, but I, that's not to say I don't awfully appreciate use those of you who watch it and there's <laughs> I've been checking my YouTube studio out pretty much every day since I've stopped uploading content and there's still an awful lot of people particularly new viewers but some uh, still some subscribers who I don't know what they're watching uh, like 20% of my content's being watched by people who are subscribed. I'm like, what are they watching? I haven't uploaded in about a month. So 
I wasn't sure about that. I'm just letting this game go by. We're 65 minutes in. We are 1-0 up against Porto. This is only a one-legged tie. So um, if we are to win today's game, we are through to the next round. I should probably be paying a little bit more attention to it as Kera finds Onjin. And we are dominating the game going by the match stats, which is nice to see. Luca Pellegrini once again being one of our key men on the left-hand side. But he's going to come off. And then the Stevens is going to come on. Um, and we're also going to get Renato Sanchez on for... Danny Olmo in the centre of the park. Another player who I actually signed for Sampdoria was Danny Olmo. And he was far better for Sampdoria than he is for Sheffield United. Definitely in terms of attributes as a Machuidi equalises for FC Porto. Uh, how delightful. Yeah, but it's interesting seeing players on different, um, basically different universes. Seeing how they perform and how the attributes actually grow. And how pivotal the effect of potential ability does seem to have. And um, particularly those players who are variable potential ability so if you don't know how potential ability works you either have a fixed or a variable potential ability and the variable basically means you'll have a range of potential ability let's say between 140 to 160 out of 200 which means it could have a quick quite significant effect on a player if they've only got 140 potential ability compared to 160 fabio silva's in behind 160 could potentially be a really like basically a world-class player in all but name and um, whereas 140 I'm pretty sure there's probably some players in the championship playing with 140. So, um, there we go. It could, could potentially be incredibly significant. As this game ticks by, I've done absolutely nothing in terms of match management. And um, we're actually going to draw this 1-1. Is this a replay or does it go to extra time? It's going to be a replay and it's going to be away from home, I would imagine. Hopefully it's a replay or do they go through for the one away goal? Um, <laughs> that could be a little bit awkward. But we'll... Oh, no, it's extra time. I'm completely out of the loop. Another highlight now. Corner for Porto's played in. Coop Miners gets his head on it at the back post. But thankfully, it goes over the bar. Half time. <coughs> we'll kick off for the second half of extra time. Oh, pardon me for that. Um, Ender Stevens now finds Mariba in the centre of the park. He's driving forward. There's a lot of uh, Sheffield United shirts in the box. Dodo, get the decent cross in. He goes for goal instead. Oh my God, Willem. How have you missed that? Point blank range from five yards out. The keeper was completely out of position and he somehow manages to hit the post. Well, that is not fun at all. Mariba's going to come off. He's had a good game, but we'll bring on Marcus Antonio for fresh legs in the centre of midfield. See if he can drive us forward and potentially get us something interesting. We'll swap him and Renato Sanchez around more suiting their um, attributes and capabilities. And there's going to be a final highlight with 40 seconds to go. It's probably not a highlight. It's probably just the end of the game, so I'll see you, I'll see you at the penalties. And here we are at the penalties. We're gonna we're just gonna let fate decide who take Oh my god, what is happening here? Confirm changes. There we go. And Sebastiano Esposito is going to be first to step up for us. I never pick me penalty takers because whenever I have, it's never went well as Esposito gets the first goal of the penalty shootout. Gerard is stepping up for FC Porto, a lefty, what a save that is, Jack Butland gets the first um, major change in this penalty shootout, Willem, he missed an absolutely guilt edge chance, oh, but he puts his penalty away, right down the middle, keeper dives the wrong way, and Coop Miners steps up to see if he can keep FC Porto in this tie or not, come on Jack, ah, he went the right way, but um, didn't commit enough, Marcus Antonio steps up, Two odd. Come on, Marcus. Get this goal done. He does. He puts us three one up. We are still in this game. Rafa Suarez steps up for FC Porto. Come on, Jack. Oh, he's gone the right way again. But he's not committing far enough. Come on, Jack. Just dive to the posts, man. If you're gonna do it, just go for it. Jean Pierre. Didn't even see him during the match. He steps up. Thankfully. <laughs> that looked a little bit awkward. But um, he somehow managed to get that into the back of the net. Danilo Pereira is walking forward for FC Porto. That always takes a while when it could be a game-ending penalty. I wish they would just fast-forward it like they do with everybody else's. But he finally gets to the ball. Jack Butland, Danilo Pereira, if he saves this, we are through. Oh, he's so close. He committed that time as well, but it was a good penalty by Pereira in fairness. And um, this goes down to this penalty. What are we? We're 4-3 up now. If we score this, we're through. So, um, Ronaldo Sanchez is going to be the man who takes on this mammoth responsibility. Will the pressure get to him? He steps up. 
Oh, he gets to him. <laughs> oh, it's 4-4. Four, four. Come on, Jack. It's on you now. Please. Luis Diaz stepping up for Porto. Renato Sanchez let us down. I think he played awfully as well after he came on. I think he had a 6.4 average rating and he's missed a penalty. That could have seen us go through. Luis Diaz against Jack Butland to keep FC Porto in this tie. Right footer. Oh, he's got it in the back of the net. We're going to sudden death, boys. Jerome Angine, we're down to the dregs now. Our centre-backs are stepping up. And he is to take the sixth penalty for us. Oh, what a penalty that was. We should have had him be fifth player spot. Maybe I should pick them, but I don't care. Machuidi, who did score the equaliser for Porto to take this to penalties, steps up to take their sixth. If he scores, we're still going. If he misses, we are through to the... Is it the quarterfinals? I'm not even sure. Matthew Eady goes straight down the middle. Jack Butland dives out the way. Dodo, our right wing back. He's not a very technically gifted footballer. He steps up. He puts it in the back of the net. Renato. What is that? Is that our celebration? The seagull? We're not Brighton. Anyway, David Neres steps up for FC Porto. Let's see if he can keep them in the game. I'm just noticing, I've never even took any notice of this corner of our stadium. I would like to get that filled in with seats. David Neres, how long are we going to be here? Oh, yeah, man, I've got things to do. Bella Kochap, another centre-back for us, stepping up. Can he put it in the back of the net? He can. I mean, we're doing well, but so are they. So, um, should I just come back to you when it's 15-14? Or should we stay, stay with it? Rodrigo Bacau. Stepping up now for FC Porto. Come on, Jack. You did it the very first penalty. Can you do it again for us to see us through to the next round? He can. Jack Butland is the hero of the penalty shootout. Ronaldo Sanchez is saved the embarrassment. As you can see, we completely dominated that match. We clearly didn't do very well in creating or taking chances. But we've managed to scrape through. We've beat... A pretty major European side in the second knockout round of the Europa League. Let's take a look to see who our opponents might be. Man City, of course, have made it through against Monaco, unfortunately. Leverkusen got beat of Frankfurt, which is, um, I'm imagining, a positive. Mönchengladbach beat Reims. Braga beat Borussia Dortmund, which is good to see. Villarreal are through. Um, Schalke beat Valencia. And Benfica beat a PEOK. So, we're through, thankfully. No thanks to Renato Sanchez. And that puts us into... Where does that put us into? That puts us into the quarterfinals. So the draws until the 10th of March. That's a bit ways away. But I tell you what, Lloyd. We're not going to do the Aston Villa game today. That took far too long. Um, it's a nothing game anyway. We're at home against 15th place um, Villa. So you would hope we should be able to comfortably win that. So the next episode will be against... Uh, whoever the mystery team is in the Europa League quarter final. So that will be the next episode. It'll be coming out in the next couple of days. And I hope to see you there. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and you sort of understand why I haven't been where I've been. You know, YouTube is very much just a side little hobby for me. So um, I come and go from it every now and then. But I would like to at least get a good run with Sheffield United and get to a place where I'm comfortable leaving the save off, having completed some of the objectives set out in the same you know i'd like to win a league title within a couple of seasons you know i'd like to get into the champions league then establish myself as a force and then hopefully look to get to a final which will trigger the end of the season uh, end of the series but yeah i'm happy with how that game's went i'm happy with the squad and i hope you're happy with this series returning but anyway if you have enjoyed today's video please consider leaving a like and there's plenty of new people watching this stuff i know you are you're not subscribed please get yourself subscribed but until next time, take it easy.